<laughs> anyway, so now that we've talked about the tree, it's time to get down here to the, uh, to the final Sephiroth where we live. All right, it's number 10. Its name is, or it's called Malkuth. <coughs> and Malkuth means kingdom, right? Which is where we live. We live in the kingdom, right? So, like nested dolls or whatever, everything else is in here. We are, we are the, um, you, arguably, you could say that this is matters, or energy's final stop, right? Last stop on the tree of life before it returns to its source, right? Now, you might, some people argue that maybe the, the clip off, right, the, dark side of the tree, maybe behind, maybe beneath it, and maybe behind it, and maybe below it. Uh, all right, so let's, so, oh no, I'm out of paper. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this. Um, let's do that. Okay, so um, another way to talk about this, we can talk about, all right, so, like I said, there's all these like sigils going on, there's these symbols within these symbols, there's nested stuff going on. Oh, there's another way to do it. There's a whole other system, and it's called the Four Worlds. And in a way, maybe we should have touched on this absolutely first, but I find it's just easier at last, because it's fractal, right? So, like, oh, and there's all kinds of ways to, to articulate this, right? So, one way, all right, so let's just write them down. Let's write them down first. Okay, the Four world, Worlds are... At which is the archetypical. There is the Rio, which is the creative. There is the Yet Yetzira, which is the formative. And then there's the sign which is sort of the, the manifest world, right? So, where can we put these? We can say that's the absolute, and that's the Bria, that's the Yetzira, or sorry, all the way down there, and then that's the aside, right? That's one way to do it. Another way, because we said this was fractal, right? So we can, for instance, take the tree of life like that. All right, so Keter, Tifereth, Malkuth, right? The Tifereth of the one above becomes the Keter of the one below, and the Malkuth of the one above becomes the Tifereth of the one below, and so on, right? So that we can make four worlds like that. You see that? So if that's the highest of the highest of the high, and that's the lowest of the lowest of the low, then we can further subdivide that out. Does, it, does that, you follow me there? I know that might be a little confusing. But the idea that, that, <laughs> um, that it's fractal again, it does it again, right? That the worlds are within the worlds. Um, but the idea is like, here's the archetypical, and then the creative, and the formative, and finally the manifest, finally the manifest. So it's like, that's the, so it's almost like it went through the tree four times to get here, or maybe five times, or maybe a thousand times, or maybe a billion times, who, who knows, right? But, you know, we can still use these higher concepts, so it doesn't matter how many times it went, as long as it was archetypical, or formative, or whatever, right? So, um, and then that's great, that takes us to the uh, the last of the traditional. What did I do? Did I do something? One, two, three, four. What did I do? Okay, so that's fine. Whatever. Um, the last one is cause and effect. All right. The idea being that you know things things can't happen unless they could happen. Right. You can't just. It doesn't matter how good a magician I am, I can't, at least right now, I can't make a hamburger appear in my hand. I just can't do that. 
I might be able to cast a spell and suddenly someone would give me a hamburger for some weird reason, but that's what we're talking about. We're talk when we say invite synchronicity, it's more like, yeah, it was a coincidence, but I know that I did that thing or I know that like that or, or whatever, or, or what were the chances? Those are the best ones, right? The, yeah, it was a coincidence, but it was a one in a million coincidence and it just happened to happen today or whatever, stuff like that, right? So, I mean, and you know, while we could sit here and, and like swap stories about like cool success stories that we've heard or experienced or whatever, at the point, at, at the end of the day, that, that's a subjective. Like I can't prove it to you and I wouldn't try because it was only real to me, you know? And that was good enough for me to keep going with it and build my own successes off, or at least in my mind, my successes. Now, you know, have my own well, little fun group of other magicians who we come together and we do work together and like we share each other's success. It's awesome. It's awesome, you know? But, um, okay, so we were talking about, so cause and effect, the point of that is like, but regardless, can't just make the hamburger happen, right? Like your, your unconscious mind still needs to work through the world. Still needs to use the resources and assets that are actually here, right? It, um, so the idea being, um, that this is ultimately when we, we collapse the wave of probability into the, it stops being a wave and becomes a part or whatever, right? Where it becomes real or manifest to us, right? So um, that's the, where I was talking before, the opening Schrodinger's box, right? You familiar with that concept yeah. of Schrodinger's box where, you know, there's an experiment where there's a 50 50 chance that the cat in the box is either alive or dead and you don't know until you open the box and until you open the box it's both alive or dead it's both a one and a zero until you've collapsed the probability or collapsed the wave function and, and manifested the reality we're doing the same thing we're doing the same thing and and what i i recommend is like don't open the box before you're ready if you're impatient it's not going to happen you know um, and when we get, we'll get to the eighth hermetic principle and that'll, that'll discuss that a little bit better.